Chechnya there were two wars in the 1990s. But the first tensions and conflicts in these areas date all the way back to the 1830 when Tsar Nicholas I invaded Caucasus and met fierce resistance. The Caucasus is a geopolitical region at the border of Europe and Asia and situated between the Black and Caspian Sea. Nowadays Chechnya is part of the Russian Federation and is located in the north of Caucasus. In 1859 Russia conquered and incorporated Caucasus. 1944 Stalin deports thousands of Chechens to Siberia and Kazakhstan on suspicion of collaborating with Germany even though some fought alongside the Red Army. In 1957, the borders shift again and the Chechen English Republic is re-established. The Chechens return home. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapses. 14 regions become independent nations. Drokhar Dudayev is elected president of Chechnya. Dudayev declares Chechnya independent. Russian President Boris Yeltsin refuses to recognize Chechen independence and sends troops in. Confronted by armed Chechens, the Russian troops are drawn to avoid a full-scale war. 1994 and tensions are higher than ever. Chechnya continues to assert its independence. Paramilitary bands accused of widespread kidnapping for ransom. Russia invades Chechnya and a bloody war ensues. In 1995, 10,000 Russian troops occupy Grozny. Dudayev is killed by a Russian rocket which is guided by satellite directly to his phone. Total Russian force numbers 45,000 troops and the Chechens start to take hostages. In 1996, the Chechens launch a major counter-offensive. 5,000 troops invade Grozny. Unwilling to use maximum force and destroy Grozny to defeat the rebels, Russians agree to a ceasefire. Yeltsin orders troops withdrawn from Chechnya. Russian military is humiliated, with 70,000 casualties on all sides. In 1999, terrorist bombs explode in Moscow and other Russian cities. Russian authorities blame Chechen paramilitary commanders. Chechen insurgents enter neighboring Russian territory of Dagestan to help Islamic fundamentalists seeking to create separate nations. Russian troops recapture breakaway areas of Dagestan. Yeltsin sends nearly 100,000 Russian troops into Chechnya. Russians occupy much of Chechnya and pulverize Grozny, driving rebels into the hills with 250,000 refugees as a result. Despite Russian claims of imminent victory, war continues. Russians are unable to defeat rebels in the mountainous areas. United Nations officials call for investigations of alleged human rights abuses by Russian troops and Chechen rebels. 2005, and the president of the separatist government of Chechnya, Aslan Maskadov, is killed by Russian troops. In July, suspected terrorists surf a bomb in northern Chechnya that killed 14 people. In July 2006, Russia announces that it has killed the infamous Chechen warlord, Shamil Basayev, responsible for the horrific Beslan terrorist attacks. In the first Chechen war, between 50 and 100,000 civilians were killed, 17,000 Chechen terrorists were killed, and 6,000 Russian soldiers were killed or went missing. Over 200 refugees fled the war zone. Shops, hospitals and other businesses shut down as they entered the war zone. There was massive political instability with constant changes of leaders. Forests, cities and towns were wiped out by heavy shelling from the Russians. The Second Chechen War inflicted harm upon both sides again. Seven and a half thousand Russians were killed and 16,000 Chechens were killed. 30,000 civilians were killed. Chechen areas of conflict saw little normal life with shops, hospitals and businesses being shut down. Due to Russians planning their attacks much more carefully after a loss to Chechen terrorists in the first war, excessive bombing took place which had scarred the landscape and some cities are now ghost towns. Chechnya is considered an ecological disaster with some of its landscape permanently damaged. Russia has re-established control in Chechnya and is the victor of the second war. It is currently in the insurgency stage where small pockets of remaining terrorists are being taken out. The Russian victory can be seen as a resolution, as a problematic extremist militant group has been suppressed. Though it is a long-term process, Chechnya should eventually see life return to normal. The Russian government's main aim after the end of the war was to resettle all the refugees from Chechnya. Refugee camps were set up by the Russian government and cha other charities and other organizations.
Many refugees have resettled back into Chechnya, but there are still some refugees still living in refugee camps in other parts of Russia. After the main war, small outbreaks of anti-war protests broke out in Russia, which were fast to be suppressed. Footage shown in the war, war zone had psychological effects on many people, in the view that most of the Russian population supported the Kremlin's moves made in Chechnya. There was one such video clip that went viral throughout Russia over the course of the war, where a Russian squad who was surrounded by Chechnyans recorded their own fate at the same time as the Russian President Yeltsin was being sworn into presidency for a second term. In conclusion, the war was a success and a disaster at the same time. One side lost and the other side won, in this case, Russia. Many lives were lost, many of which could have been saved. This documentary by now should have given you a brief but detailed insight into the russian Chechen war that took place in the 1990s, and furthermore, shown you the geographical factors involved, such as political, economic, environmental, and social impacts it had, not just in Russia, but in the world, as the war against terror, which world powers continue today, was first started by Russia in Chechnya, in technicality. So in other words, the war has continued but with different armies fighting terrorism which sparked first in Chechnya. <laughs>